Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of our daily message. We are spiritual, we are socially distanced, yet we are spiritually connected, connected more than ever. And today's message, we're going to continue on our theme in our day to day, going through the entire Seder. This year is going to be unique that we, we are all going to have to make our own Seder this year. So it is very powerful that we all know what we're doing. We got a day to day. Today, we are going to go through steps four and five. Steps four and five we're going to go into. Today's Tuesday, March 31st. And I want to dedicate today's study to the Refua Shalema, to the complete recovery of everybody that is fighting this disease currently. I got news last night that some of my family members, close family members, currently have this disease, and we are positive, we are upbeat, we are um, optimistic about them returning to full full health, but we gotta do what we can, and we're dedicating today's study in their merit of a full, of a full and complete recovery. So that is what it is, um, and we're gonna jump right in. So we are, we finished the first three the past two days. The first one was Kadesh, Kiddush. The next one was Orchatz, washing of the hands. The third one was Karpas, dipping of the, of the onion. Today we're going to be talking about Yachatz and Magid. Yachatz is the breaking of the middle matzah. You got three matzahs on the Seder. The middle one is broken. And it's broken half of the... Middle matzah goes back into the Seder plate. The other half gets broken into five further pieces, gets placed into a small sack, and is saved later for the afikomen. So I want to talk about, that's on the basic level. I want to talk about more in the details of what that means as we like to do on this show here. We like to explain behind the scenes. We like to explain a little bit Kabbalistically. We like to make it meaningful. We like to connect with it. So what is this concept of breaking the middle matzah? Hello, Mike. Welcome. What is a concept of making of breaking the middle matzah? Breaking of the middle matzah is the idea of lechem oni, which means it is the bread of affliction. We were once slaves in Egypt. Now we're free. We're compared to kings tonight. We lean we have four cups of wine. We're having a lavish meal. But the reason why we take half when we put it to the Afikoman and a half goes back into the Kaira, into the Seder plate, because the half that goes into the Seder plate is giving us a message, which is, today we're free, but we should never forget where we came from. Never forget our history. We can never forget our history. Therefore, even though we are moving onwards and we're going into telling the story into the next step, we should still always remember where we came from. And I think it's important in life. Everyone had humble beginnings. Anybody who was anybody today had humble beginnings. And we should know that with these humble beginnings, they should never leave us. It keeps us humble. It keeps us real. It keeps us um, equal to our peers in day to day. And we should always remember that, that, that that's why in the Seder, we have two whole matzahs, but we also have a half a matzah to, to keep us to keep us. A little grounded. That's number one. Number two, there's a, there's another there's another idea that it comes to mind, which is in the temple, in the ark of the temple, there were the tablets. Obviously, the tablets that Moses came down with on the on, from from Mount Sinai. What was also in the in the ark? Not just the tablets that Moses came down with, the full tablets. Also, the broken tablets were in there, and it's a and and. Part of that message is the same idea as a broken matzah back into the Seder plate. That what? That we're trying to remember. We're trying to, to, to demonstrate that we're never going to forget those humble moments in our life. That's yachatz. And, okay, that's the half that goes back into the Seder plate. The other half, what's with the other half? The other half goes broken into five pieces. It goes on the side for the Afikoman, which we're going to talk about when we get to Tzafon, which is all the way in another 10 steps or something. Let's, let's keep the Afikoman part for then. But the idea is that the reason why we place it aside is because it has to be saved for later. We don't want to eat it by accident. Okay? That concludes step number four. Step number five is what? Magid. What is the highlight of Magid? Magid is telling you the story. Telling of the story of Exodus. Magid. Tell the Exodus story. It's long. 
It's a lot of words in English and in Hebrew. And uh, it goes for many, many pages. But what are the highlights of Magid? The highlight of Magid obviously is the idea of the four questions. The children asking the four questions. So, obviously, we all know the four questions. What I want to dive into is a little bit, again, the deeper dimension here. What is the deeper dimension? The deeper dimension here is two things I wanted to point out. There are many, many different dimensions, but let's focus on two things in the next couple of minutes. The first one is the actual, the actual um, idea of asking questions. Judaism is not a blind faith. Judaism is a faith of questions, of owning the faith, of understanding it, making it real, making it personal. And the reason why it is such a focal point, one of the, high, one of the most popular holidays in Judaism is Passover. The, 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 the pinnacle of Passover is what? The Seder. The pinnacle of the Seder is what? The four questions. What, what does that mean? That comes to tell us a very important point. And again, we're digging beyond, behind the surface a little bit. We, 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 um, we're, we, we're asking questions because we want to demonstrate that Judaism in no way is a religion of blind faith, a religion of, of taking things without understanding. Um, and therefore, that's the first message of the four questions. We ask, we say, hey, how come we're doing this? How come we're doing that? Why do we lean? Why do we eat matzah? All these things are going on. It's all very important because why? Because it's an essential part of Judaism to believe that we need to understand faith. Faith is not blind. Faith, you need to own. You need to understand it. You need to take it personally. That's number one. Number two, the second message. The second message is that we're focusing on the children. At Chabad, one of our biggest focus and our dream and our vision is to have a, a hustling and bustling center for, for Jewish children. Why? Because Jewish children are the future. If you take the Passover Seder from A to Z, it is focused around the children. There's a custom that we don't waste, we don't waste time when we come home from synagogue. We immediately make the Kiddush. We start the, the, the 15 steps. Why? So the children shouldn't sleep. We do things throughout the entire Seder. We dip, we eat matzah, we lean. Why? So the children should ask questions. We, we, we encourage, we start when we ask them questions, who do we start from? We start from the youngest child and we move up to the oldest in the room. Why? It's all about the children. The children are the guarantors. When God wanted to give the Torah to Moses, right before Mount Sinai, God said, who is going to be a guarantor for the, for, for the Torah? And Moses said, oh, we got the sages. God said, no. We have our parents. No. We have our judges. No. We have our great achieve achievements. No, no, no. When Moses said, our children are our guarantors, then that is what caused, um, that is what caused God to say, yes, go ahead. We're good to go. We got the Torah going. So, um, I think that's a beautiful point, a beautiful message for us to take on. This Passover, it's about passing it along to the next generation. If you don't have your children right around you, pass it along to somebody else. Somebody else. Somebody else that is unaware of Passover. Spread this message with somebody else. It's about making sure that all of us, all of us together know that this is a, our shared responsibility to ensure that this tradition carries on. Jews have been, have been doing Passover for 3,000 years. Don't break the chain. Keep it going. Keep it going. That, is, uh, that, that concludes our step number five. That concludes our step number five. Um, and our, uh, our, our daily reminder that if somebody, anybody who is in need here in Loudoun County, that needs anything physically, spiritually, emotionally, reach out to our task force, Jewish, uh, uh, sorry, Corona hotline at jewishloudon.com, Corona hotline at jewishloudon.com. They can get whatever they got. We got a task force up and running throughout the, throughout the county. At any place in the country, at a county, Jewish, not Jewish, let us know. We'll get them whatever they need. Another reminder, tomorrow night at 7.30 p.m., we're going to ha be having a cooking class right here, hosted by uh, yours truly. We're going to be making a roast for Passover. I'm going to call my mom. She's going to give me the recipe, and we're going to do it. We're going to have a great time. So come prepared 7.30 tomorrow night. As well, we have our partial class on Thursday at 7 p.m., Make sure you guys are all around for that as well. And ending off with a message of hope 
and happiness and positivity. And again, a message for all those, this class has been dedicated. The fact that we're studying Torah, studying Torah is a mitzvah. The fact that we're studying Torah now is dedicated for the speedy recovery for all those who need it, especially those who are close to us and for the world over that everybody should have, be healthy and happy. And again, the mind is a powerful tool. Think good, it'll be good and be positive, be upbeat. And I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow at noon at 12 o'clock right here to go through the next steps of the Seder. All the best and have a wonderful day and a healthy day.